Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rotonic Connect webinar series. Uh, my, name is, my name is Thorsten Killinger, and um, I will be the uh, moderator for today's webinar. Um, the Rotonic Connects webinar is a series of uh, four weeks webinars in which we... Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, in which we um, participate uh, in different technologies and show you different um, suppliers which provide these kind of technologies. And in the first week, we start with the Wi-Fi series. And the first day, we have Murata we are here with uh, with us. We and we want to sp speak about um, Wi-Fi six and also Wi-Fi seven, Wi-Fi six E, and um, what you can do with it. Overall, I will just uh, show you a little slides, um, what you can expect from the webinar or what you can see. Um, so, like I said, we will talk about uh, Murata. And um, here with me, I have Mark Porter and um, he will be the product specialist from, from Murata's side and we'll talk about the Wi-Fi technologies. Um, overall, this webinar will be 45 minutes. We have 30 minutes of um, presentation from Murata and then about 15 minutes of uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions, just um, put them into the Q&A session um, on the right-hand side. And also this recording will be recorded. This webinar will be recorded, sorry, and provided to you afterwards. So without any um, hesitation, I will now introduce or welcome Mark Porter. Welcome, Mark. Good morning, everybody. Good Thanks. morning. Good. Then um, the stage is yours. You can have um, your presentation time, and then we will hear each other in the Q&A session. Let me just uh, let me get started. OK, um, during the course of this um, webinar, I'll very briefly give you a, a, a very quick introduction to myself. I'll then talk about some of the, uh, the newer um, Wi-Fi technologies. Um, particularly Wi-Fi 6 and, um, and Wi-Fi 7. And then I'll talk um, a little bit about our um, Wi-Fi module mod uh, Wi-Fi um, modules with the Infineon and NXP chipsets. And I'll also touch on the, uh, the tools that are available to help uh, integrate those uh, devices into uh, your product developments. Uh, so first of all, just a, a, a little bit um, about myself. Sorry, uh, let's. I've worked in the um, electronic component industry for um, a little bit, well, since the back end of the the nineteen eighties, and I joined Murata in uh, in, in two thousand. At Murata, I've held a number of different uh, roles uh, within the organisation, and my current role um, has been supporting our wireless connectivity module products to the European distribution channel. Um, a role that I've done for um, well, just just about eight years. Um, eight years at the beginning of um, of October. I'm based in the UK and focusing on short range technologies covering the distribution um, business here in Europe. And a colleague of mine is focused on the uh, the long range. Um, together, we're part of the uh, the wider Murata um, European Wireless Connectivity Module team. So talking about the um, Wi-Fi technology, um, we're looking here at um, a timeline for, for Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi is maturing or growing up roughly every two years, and the, the Wi-Fi Alliance um, migrated their terminology for marketing purposes from the IEEE standards as the reference to using um, generational names. So Wi-Fi 5 was developed for faster speed and throughput compared to the previous generations. Um, starting to get into gigabit per second data rates um, for the uh, infrastructure. 
Wi-Fi 6 was developed for improved efficiency and stability in the network. And um, as the number of devices um, in networks, Wi-Fi networks has increased, this became in increasingly important. And Wi-Fi 7 is the latest and greatest and has been developed for um, even faster speeds and higher throughput, as well as further uh, improvements in the efficiency of the network. Um, on the timeline for the um, Wi-Fi technology, the first thing that struck me, um, while it seems to be a mature technology to perhaps the younger people um, um, on the webinar, um, for me and perhaps people of my generation, it, it, it doesn't really seem to have been around for that long, uh, that is as a perception. Initially, very basic Wi-Fi was available um, in 1977 with low data rates, um, but significantly higher than what was the um, 56K modem, um, dial-up modem function that was available at the time. Then 802.11b is introduced um, for the 2.4 gigahertz band in 1999, and um, data throughput um, go into double digits. At about the same time, um, introducing um, 802.11a with the 5 gigahertz spectrum and much higher throughputs now at uh, 54 gigabits. A few years later, um, 802.11g is increasing the, uh, the throughput in the 2.4 gig part of the spectrum to 54 megabits. Uh, these are all pre-generational um, naming, hence the, uh, the quotation marks around the Wi-Fi 0, Wi-Fi 1, etc. Now we move into Wi-Fi 4, which is basically supporting 802.11n and the um, theoretical data rate is now into triple triple digits, around about 600 megabits per second, as well as um, multiple input and multiple output um, antenna configurations. Then uh, Wi-Fi 5 in, in around about 2014 with support for 11AC, um, only 10 years ago, and that's pushing us already into the, uh, the gigabit data rate and supporting um, multi-user MIMO and 160 gigahertz um, bandwidths. And then the more recent um, adoptions, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E with 802.11x opening up the 6 gigahertz band um, and um, very high, you know, almost up to uh, 10 gigabits uh, per second there, tri-band radio, uh, tri-band uh, use. And um, most recently, the Wi-Fi 7 release, 802.11be. So here, um, double digit uh, gigabit per second data rates, high um, channel bandwidth, 320 megahertz, and um, a whole range of um, other technologies and uh, sorry, other features and functions which are, are pushing Wi-Fi even further forward. Looking at the key features on the, the Wi-Fi 6 technology then, um, the, basically the 802.11x, 11ax standard Wi-Fi 6, um, so backward compatible with 11n and 11ac as Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5. It can be um, a single band operating only at 2.4 gigahertz. It can be dual band supporting 2.4 and 5, or um, as mentioned, um, now triple band, with opening up of the uh, six gigahertz spectrum for uh, for use with Wi-Fi, so potentially two point four, five, and six gigahertz. Wi-Fi six supports um, higher data rates, as we saw on the uh, the previous slide, with the ability to handle data rates up to uh, nine point six gigabits per second in terms of the the network uh, infrastructure. More devices can be supported on the network with the use of um, resource units. The technology here is um, helping improve network performance, especially um, in environments where there are many connected devices. I'm sure most people on the webinar can picture the number of devices they have connected just in their homes, uh, not to mention uh, more commercial environments like offices and airports. There's laptops, mobile phones, smart TVs, audio systems, as well as um, a range of smart home devices like cameras and doorbells. And this is all indicative of the, uh, the much larger number of Wi-Fi clients connected in a typical home, perhaps since um, 10 years ago. 
Wi-Fi 6 can also help with power consumption. Um, while we still have a responsibility, you know, while most Wi-Fi devices are connected to uh, mains electricity, um, some are battery operated, and even for the uh, the mains electricity, we have a, a responsibility to make uh, equipment as power uh, efficient as possible. With the six gigahertz, the six E um, variant, the six gigahertz spectrum in use, and that's a, a relatively uncluttered part of the uh, spectrum in terms of uh, in terms of Wi-Fi. Uh, between um, five five nine twenty five megahertz and seven one twenty five megahertz, the initial focus um, of deployment seems to be particularly in Europe is is five nine twenty five to six four twenty five um, megahertz. Um, and finally, um, there can also be some improvement in the range that Wi-Fi signals can be propagated over with Wi-Fi six. This will depend on on many factors, though, in in practical terms, things like the network infrastructure, antenna designs, and of course the uh, the type of envi physical environment that Wi-Fi six is in, uh, deployed in. Uh, and of course, based on basic physics, um, the higher frequency bands will have the uh, the shorter range um, potential than the uh, two point six gigahertz band. Looking in a, a little bit more detail at some of the features and um, what they may mean for uh, for users, with the opening of the six gigahertz spectrum for Wi-Fi, this relatively uncluttered um, part compared to particularly the two point four gig um, part of the spectrum, there's the option to use um, one hundred and sixty megahertz channel bandwidth, allowing up to seven channels across the full um, spectrum. These 160 megahertz channels are an option for the 5 gigahertz band as well, but there are some portions of the spectrum which are blocked in some countries, and that's going to limit the number of channels that can be supported. At this time, <coughs> excuse me, at this time, it looks like European countries already adopt, um, as I said, 5925 to 6425 megahertz, and it looks as though perhaps 50% of the landmass countries in Europe are considering the higher frequency portion as well. North America already adopted the the full range nine, uh, 5925 through to 7125 megahertz. Wi-Fi 6 has taken the um the QAM modulation from essentially 1k uh, up to 1k um or uh, compared to the the original uh, the, the earlier um, 256 QAM on on Wi-Fi 5. So with and with um, Wi-Fi six, it's also possible to support um, eight by eight uh, multi-user MIMO um, devices. So these changes are contributing to pushing the throughput in Wi-Fi six up by roughly two hundred and seventy-five percent from um, three point five gigabits per second with Wi-Fi five to nine point six um, gigabits per second on on Wi-Fi six. Target wait time, um, TWT, is a, a mechanism, a new feature in Wi-Fi 6, and this allows devices to negotiate in the network when and how often to wake up. Previously, with um, Wi-Fi 5, all devices were working on the same timing schedule. So this will allow some devices, um, such as um, user 2 here in the diagram, to be in sleep or low power mode for much longer periods. So this feature could be especially useful for some applications where there's no need for um, a, a live data stream, for example, maybe on um, domestic security cameras or video doorbells. With a long sleep period available for user two here, then battery life of products uh, will also be extended. And with the ability, there's no need to have um, all users connecting at the same time period, so the spectrum usage is um, and, and efficiency is also improved. OFDMA has been introduced, and um, Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5 um, are working with um, OFDM, Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. Um, an improvement using the OFDMA, Orthogonal Frequency, Multi uh, Frequency Division Multiple Access, gives the opportunity to support multiple clients with, mul um, with simultaneous transmissions. 
This technique's freeing up the limitations of the older standards when simultaneous requests um, slow down the network as clients essentially form a queue to complete uh, transmissions. So the multiple access part of OFDMA technology for high density areas, um, I guess, place, you know, place, for example, airports or sports venues or um, shopping, shopping malls will benefit from improved speed and service on the network. And further um, facilitation of um, the network is, is, avail is, is available here with the introduction of um, resource units or RUs. In Wi-Fi 5, a single user um, uses part of the available band, but the remaining portions of the band are not available for use. So not such an efficient um, use of the spectrum and limits the number of users uh, on the network. With Wi-Fi 6, um, the subcarriers in the band can be grouped um, and, and used for different users or stations. From the diagram example here, uh, with Wi-Fi 6, three users can be assigned to the band, with user 1 having a, a wide range of subcarriers assigned for transmission of more data, and users 2 and users 3 have smaller ranges of subcarriers. So this is going to improve the efficiency in the network. Um, and also allows for the flexible use of channels and subcarriers. Use of the 160 megahertz channel would give the highest throughput and therefore the lowest latency in the network. And additionally, um, for IoT use cases uh, where perhaps large amounts of data are not needed to be sent um, quickly, the ability to work with the 20 megahertz channel bandwidth um, combined with RU, use leads to a, a further increase in efficiency of the network and improvements in the power consumption. Range. Um, with Wi-Fi 6, um, the range of signal propagation can be improved over Wi-Fi 5 uh, based on the use of larger basic service sets supported by an extended range and physical layer protocol data unit. The same access point can advertise um, two types of basic service set, extended range and non-extended range, uh, where clearly the ERBSS um, supports the, the better range, the extended range. It's reasonable to expect um, perhaps a 25% increase uh, in range with Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5, but as I mentioned earlier, there's many factors which will impact this in real-world conditions. Um, the physical environment, materials which are blocking line of sight uh, operation, what type of product housings are used, where antennas are located inside the product, and uh, as we mentioned, the bands uh, bands used. In addition, um, IC makers are also looking to implement some technologies in their um, chipsets, proprietary technologies perhaps, which can potentially give further improvements in range for Wi-Fi 6. These include um, functions like OFDM boost to make uh, a frame easier to detect by a peer device, and perhaps algorithms to improve the detection of low power signals, as well as improvements in the 2.4 gig band performance for TX and RX paths uh, using two radio cores. And potentially, um, when these features are combined, this may bring an additional um, increase in range of perhaps as much as um, 75%. Moving on to look at the Wi-Fi 7 technology, which is the IEEE 802.11be standard. This uh, be support for even higher throughputs. Um, bandwidth is um, doubled to 320 megahertz. The modulation support is um, increased to um, 4K QAM with um, 4096 constellations. There's the introduction of um, multi-link operation, allowing stations to connect to the access point in multiple bands at the same time. Uh, Multi-resource units means that multiple resource units can be assigned to a single user for transmission efficiency, um, and low latency for the technology helps to support um, applications and use cases which need to be as close to uh, real time as possible. Let's have a look, uh, a quick look at some of the features um, offered now on, on Wi-Fi 7 release and then what they may mean for uh, for users. 
So the first one is the increase in the available channel bandwidth. Um, Wi-Fi 6 was supporting the 160 megahertz um, channel bandwidth, and now um, 320 megahertz bandwidth is available. The QAM modulation density was increased fourfold, fourfold from um, 1K to 4K. And now the ability to handle up to 16 by 16 um, MIMO streams as multi-user MIMO. So potentially here we've got an increase of just almost five um, five times in the um, data rate to um, 46 gigabits per second. So going back to that original um, timeline for Wi-Fi, that's a, a, an incredible increase um, from the original um, data rate of, of Wi-Fi at, at two mega megabits per second back in the, uh, the late 1990s. To help with the speed and network efficiency, the multi-link operation um, feature allows the station or end device to connect to the access point or router in multiple bands simultaneously. With Wi-Fi 6, even the support in devices for the three bands, it's now possible to connect. Um, it, it's only possible for each station to connect to the access point via a single band. This can this um, multi-link operation can be um, managed as either an asynchronous um, mode where the transmit and receive data can happen on different bands at the same time, this STR mode. Or um, in a synchronous mode, the mechanism to manage um, MLO is for all links to be allowed to only receive or send data um, as a non-simultaneous transmit and receive operation. This MLO function can be supported in with any of the bands, um, unlike Wi-Fi 6 single band operation. And this also increases an increase, um, results in an increase in throughput, uh, reduces the latency and improves the quality of service. So it's ideally suited for higher data rate um, use cases for Wi-Fi, such as um, VR or AR or um, online gaming. Wi-Fi 7 has also um, further expanded the use of that resource unit function, uh, the approach introduced with Wi-Fi 6, and now multiple resource units can be allocated to a single user and combi combined. In the diagram here, uh, user 1 on the network has been allocated a wider range of frequencies uh, in, in 1RU and a small range of frequencies in RU2. And these are independent of the RU and three allocated to user two in the same band. Puncturing um, in the MRU approach allows um, for um, bypassing interference blockers or um, other users on the on the channel. So in the diagram, you can see um, on the left hand side, there is some um, use of the spectrum in, in the interference area in the high portion, which prevents the um, the user from using the full channel. Using the puncturing approach on the right hand side, the, the network allow it is building up our use around that interference and therefore uh, making much more efficient use of the spectrum. And Wi-Fi 7 is further improving um, latency and giving users a, a, an experience which is mo mo much closer to uh, a wired network feel. And that's through that uh, MLO approach. Moving on to talk um, a bit more about um, the Murata specific part of the, uh, the topic here. So the previous points were more um, technology related. Why might modules be the best approach for you and um, implementing your wireless connectivity solution in product development? First of all, um, a module can significantly reduce the time to market for product developments. Um, since you're working with a black box component where the design complexities of working in higher frequency bands like five and six gigahertz are simplified, you have a 50 ohm antenna port, 
the needed filtering, matching, switching, etc., is all included in the RF front end as part of that black box. Secondly, it's possible to optimize the size of your product, whether that's by you know, reducing the overall size of the, the product you want to offer to the market, um, or you can add um, more features into the same size product by using this smaller size component. Our smallest module available um, on, the, on the market from our side today for Wi-Fi 4 is less than 36 square millimeters in terms of the PCB area. Thirdly, um, using a pre-certified module uh, reduces the time, cost, and of course the risk in the product reg regulatory certification approach. Murata is working with reference antenna designs um, and supports the regulatory certification for North America based on these designs and can provide all, uh, your test house with conducted test reports for the EN requirements. With a, with a wireless connectivity module, it's much less likely that repeat visits to the test house are needed to support the radio aspect of the product design, which will most likely lead to design changes, PCB respins, and additional test costs and lost development time. And then since you are working with a, a black box component, you also get secondary benefits like a simplified bill of materials, uh, the benefit of our relationship with the IC partners, um, the potential to look at doing functional product, product testing on the line rather than full RF testing. And then if you're thinking that a module is a beneficial way of implementing um, wireless connectivity in your product design, um, some of the benefits that Murata is able to bring would be the fact that we're working with the uh, best in class IC partners. We're focused on um, the new technologies, the features and functions that we're talking about today, for example, that come with these um, ICs. We're able to offer some of the, the smallest modules on the market, as I mentioned. We can use, uh, this is achieved, partly achieved by being able to use in-house components, um, some of which are in the uh, smallest commodity component sizes, as well as using things like um, while, uh, wafer level CSPIC packages. We're supporting that regulatory certification approach with the reference antenna design um, and the antenna and regulatory guideline application notes are on our product web pages. We have a strong support team here in Europe, um, as well as access to development teams and specialists globally. And last but not least, we're working with the European distributors uh, like Rutronic to ensure that uh, customers have local people that they can contact to support development needs, technical issues as quickly as possible. Move on now to talk about some of the, uh, the, the products um, very quickly. Um, I'll only cover a, a very limited range, and um, as they say in the um, in the commercials, other products are available. Looking first of all at um, some Infineon products uh, with newer chipsets, the first one is this um, Type 2 EA module, which is based on the CYW55573 chipset, which is a Wi-Fi 6E solution. So this is tri-band Wi-Fi 6 module with support for that new al newly allocated 6 gig band as 11AX. It's also it's, it's supporting um, 802.11 ABGNAC and AX, also supporting Bluetooth 5.3 for basic rate, um, enhanced data rate and low energy. Um, whilst this is one of our bigger product sizes at 12 and you know, 120 square millimeters, 12.5 by 9.4 millimeter, looking at that right hand um, block diagram the complexity of the front end then um, hopefully you can appreciate the uh, the approach for miniature miniaturization on our product design from that standard interfaces um on the module here are um, pcie for the wi-fi connection to the host or sdio and uart or pcm for the bluetooth portions The chip itself, the, the, the 55573 chip, is managing the coexistence between the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios without the need for any external um, function. As an IoT solution, there's support here for um, 
the five and six gigahertz phi are for data rates up to 1200 megabits per second. And, and of course, real life um, use case is likely to be limited more by the interface between the module and the host than the over the air interface. The product here can support the station mode and soft access point modes and uh, radio certified for North America and Japan with reference designs. The main ecosystem um, we're working with um, for support is IMX application processors and Linux. But this particular ver this chip, this module is also now supported with the STM32 microcontroller and RTOS ecosystem. And finally, um, LE Audio is supported here on the uh, on the module. The next part, the 2GF module, is based on the newer CYW430-22 chipset, which is um, Infineon's next generation device following on from their 430-12 chipset. It's a um, Wi-Fi 5 device supporting dual band operation, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Um, we're using the same physical package um, and pin assignment as we had with our um, previous generation, the 1LV module with the, the 43012 chip. Support here for 802.11a, B, G, N, A, C technologies with um, 20 megahertz channel bandwidth. Again, Bluetooth is integrated here with both that classic and um, low energy technologies. Here we've got um, SDIO um, for the Wi-Fi interface and Bluetooth with um, UART as the primary and secondary support for the PCM, PCMOI squared S interfaces. There's a single 50 ohm antenna port um, for an external antenna to support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functions. It's also possible to have a, a, a separate dedicated optional Bluetooth only antenna. The 2FY module, um, the last of the Infineon parts I'll talk about this today, um, is a tri-band Wi-Fi 6 module, so supporting 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz um, under that uh, 11AX uh, requirement. Again, here with um, 20 megahertz um, channel bandwidths and support for that combination of the, the, the what was the classic Bluetooth and the, uh, the low energy Bluetooth. This module is a very small package, so um, almost 58 square millimeters and is based on the same package, uh, module package size as we had for one of our um, popular previous generations in, in Wi-Fi 5, the Type 1 MW. Radio certification is um, ongoing for this product. The part is in the sort of late stages of development. So we're looking to support um, both a PCB trace and some antenna component with UFL connector. The main ecosystem for the um, use case support will be the IMX application processor with Linux. And Infineon have also added the, um, the family of chip um, here, the 555 chip um, support for, the, um, for that STM32 microcontroller plus RTOS. Mass production here is, is planned for November of this year. Um, we've also started shipping um, samples to some of our lead customers here in Europe. And ultimately there will be a um, eval board from one of from our um, partner embedded artists and still the part number still to be defined. Looking at some module the latest module developments, the latest products with the NXP chipset range, the other um, best in class partner that we are primarily working with for Wi-Fi. And first of all is this type 2EL module, which is based on the NXP Tri, Tri Radio IW612 chipset. This is um, supporting um, Wi-Fi 6 dual band. Um, it's also supporting um, Bluetooth, at, at the 5.2 core specification level with um, basic rate, enhanced data rate and low energy. And there's this additional third radio function supporting the 802.15.4 thread. 
We have a sister module in the same physical package based on the IW610, which doesn't have that 15.4 um, thread support. Single antenna port on the module, Wi-Fi over SDIO, Bluetooth on UART, and the SPI interface here is the, uh, the one used for the thread. This module would be an ideal um, component for um, support of MATA. So it, it supports MATA as a controller and also the thread border router function. Primarily um, support here with the ecosystem use for IMX application processors and the, the Linux um, operating system. The type 2 FR module, it's a little different from the previous modules. Um, now there's an integrated processor function inside the module. So this allows both the radio functions and an application to be hosted on the module, making this a hostless design. This allows um, the benefit of being able to add Wi-Fi connectivity as a function to an existing product design with the, the least effort for both hardware and software aspects. Again, the um, chip here, the RW612, is a tri-band radio with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, low energy and thread radios. Um, the integrated MCU is a Cortex-M33 260 megahertz processor, and we have integrated 16 mega flash in the module to provide enough onboard memory for most, um, if not all, requirements. Again, a standard 50 ohm antenna port on the module, which can support the, um, the full functions with a, an option for a dedicated Bluetooth antenna and configuration using the external component um, shown. It, again, this, this device is in the late stages of development, mass production planned for um, October. Um, so regulatory certification with the reference antenna approach is in the, uh, the last stages. Um, development here it's supported with the N NXP's um, MCU Expresso environment and would fit very nicely for use in products which already use um, IMXRT processors for the, the main product processor. Here, because the processor is integrated in the module, the interface externally is now USB and there are support for some of the GPA, GPIO functions. And the final product slide for the NXP solutions for this webinar is our Type um, 2LL module. So this is a dual band Wi-Fi 6 module um, supporting 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Um, support here only for the Bluetooth low energy, um, but also the, the thread. So this is a, another tri-radio solution. This module is based on the um, IW610G chipset. And we have a sister part with the IW610F for Freddy, and that um, doesn't have the thread support. They're, uh, they're pin compatible solutions. So here the, the module is the same physical package as the type 2EL we mentioned earlier. And like the 2EL, Wi-Fi supported over SDIO, BLE over UART, and thread over SPI. Support here is um, will be with the IMX application processors and Linux, and the module here should be coming through for mass production by the end of um, Q2 2025. So this is still in um, very early stages of, of development on our side. These modules um, that we talked about with Infineon and NXP chipsets can be used across a range of ecosystems but not all modules um, can be used for every ecosystem. With the, I'll skip through the, uh, the details here, but um, you can see that we've got support for um, RTOS, you know, Infineon solutions, um, the STMicro um, STM32 cube environment. Um, obviously with the NXP based modules, they want to support their own uh, processor technology, so RT, IMX um, application processors, and also now support for the STM32 MP application processors with the uh, the OpenST Linux release. When you get the, in order to do some evaluation, where we've partnered with um, a Swedish company, Embedded Artists, 
um, to support M.2 module carrier boards with these Wi-Fi products. Um, they have a, a range of um, module carrier boards based on the M.2 standard. Um, they include a reference antenna for, for SISO um, configured modules and for MIMO, they, they support um, UFL connectors. This provides a development environment um, when you combine it with the embedded artist com boards, the red PCBs at the bottom of the, the, the screen here, and their, um, their motherboard. Um, they have a motherboard for both um, IMX application processor and IMX RT boards. And this environment, this whole environment provides a flexible, um, low cost approach. It's very easy to switch between the um, Wi Fi functions. You can increase the, 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 the the complexity or you can decrease the complexity just by swapping out the M.2 boards. And likewise, if you want to use a more complex or lower cost processor, it's easy to move up and down the uh, the performance spectrum by swapping out the uh, the com boards and all at a relatively low, uh, low cost compared to purchasing a complete um, processor evaluation board from your uh, IC partner. For the 2FR module, it's a slightly different approach because this, this device is including um, the host processor, so we don't use an M.2 carrier board. We have a, a full evaluation board here, which um, can be used in conjunction with the NXP MCU link device for uh, development and um, use with our um, IMXRT processors. And the module itself on the board here will be pre-flashed with this same um, Wi-Fi CLI um, function to support basic Wi-Fi operation. So summarizing, Wi-Fi 6 has already brought significant improvements in the performance of the uh, WLAN networks through new features, new technologies, a significant increase in performance and network efficiency over Wi-Fi 5. Uh, Wi-Fi 7 is now bringing further improvements in performance, uh, reduced latency, concurrent use of multiple bands. Many of the improvements are driven on the infrastructure side, but then reflected in the end device functionality. Uh, Murata as a module maker is, is already able to offer modules taking advantage of Wi-Fi 6 benefits. And now we have development plans for modules with um, Wi-Fi 7 supporting the, uh, the IoT chipsets um, from our key partners. So they should be available um, around about 2026. And uh, Murata's Wi-Fi modules can help you with your own product development to get those advanced features on, into your products and out to your customer bases as, as easily as possible. I guess same questions, I guess, Torsten. Yes, so uh, thank you, Mark, um, for the presentation about Wi-Fi uh, 6 and Wi-Fi 7. And we still, uh, we already got a few questions, so I would start with the very first one. Which interfaces are needed to connect Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at the same time? Is only SDIO for both still possible in the future? Um, it depends on the chipset. Um, many of the historic chipsets are not supporting um, concurrent use, so it depends whether you're looking for concurrent use or not, but some of the um, some of the newer chipsets are able to support concurrent use. Um, can be done on USB. We have a we have a product with um, USB for both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but also some of the products will support SDIO for the Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth on UART, even with concurrent use. Okay, thank you. Then the next question would be: Are there only chipsets from Murata side, or also completed modules like USB dongles? Um, we are essentially a component manufacturer, so we would tend to stop our um, scope of development at this sort of module level. We're not looking at producing, at least in the, the current market, we're not looking at producing a essentially a finished product like a USB dongle. Okay. Then following up with the next question, why does Murata not include uh, the antenna function in the modules? Oh, that's a that's a good question. Um, 
it's one of these um well it, it, it's a question that comes up if if we include the antenna function you will find some customers have challenges they want to use a, a higher gain antenna or they need some external location um if you don't include the the, the antenna function then some customers would prefer to have it included we we think for, for the majority of particularly with wi-fi that the devices only have a, a an antenna port and we think this gives um customers the the best flexibility in terms of their product development in terms of the location for the antenna within the product um and and will it eventually lead to the, the best performance it's difficult okay. to please everybody all the time <laughs> okay thank you so um, the next question maybe i can answer could i get the presentation to talk to the developers about it um i think we will get the presentation from mark and then we will provide it to all participants afterwards also there will be a recording uh, available so you have the information always by hand going into the next question can i really transfer up to 1200 megabits um with a wi-fi 6 end device um well, it's theoretically over the air that would be possible with the um, you know the latest chipsets, the latest modules. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, in, in in the discussion, the the most likely the the real life um, throughput will be limited, and that will be limited by the uh, most likely by the interface between the host processor and the uh, the Wi-Fi module. So 1200 would be theoretically possible, but I think in, in real life cases, it, it will be you know significantly lower. Okay, thank you. And then the last question I can see right now is, where can I find information on the reference antennas um, for your Wi-Fi modules? Okay, um, so most of the, 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 the products that we have on our website now, especially the, the, the more recently developed parts, full details of the reference antenna design, um, component specification are available on the product web page. There are links to the document package um, and generally that is now also including a um, regulatory certification application note. So that will give a lot more um, information for customers about taking their product through the uh, the regulatory stages and includes reference to firmware releases and physical antennas. Okay, thank you. So that's all for the questions we currently have. Um, if you should have any further questions, just let us know. We from Rotronic will be um, happy to help you. And that's also it for today's webinar. Um, with Murata. Later this day, we will have another webinar with uh, Inside SIP. So you are free uh, to join that as well. Uh, um, thank you all for the participation and I wish you a good day. Thank you.